Hi, and welcome to another PowerShell quick tip. In this quick tip, we're going to be taking a look at the commandlet for outgrid view. Outgrid view is a great commandlet if you just want to output your data that you have imported or you've queried it in a nice kind of formatted screen compared to just outputting it to the console and having to scroll through it. With outgrid view, you can actually apply filters directly to the grid view and quickly sort through your data and find the information that you're looking for. This could be especially useful if you have large CSV files or large XML files or large JSON files, or if you just have like a large data set, like maybe get process or get service and you wanna find out something really quickly. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started. Let's take a look at the out grid view commandlet. So let's actually just start with the out grid view commandlet on something like a get process. So if we actually just run the get process commandlet right now on this computer, we see that we do get the output to our console. Um, it is like very easy to kind of process. We can obviously um, also pipe this as we've seen before, where process name is like, uh, let's find anything that's like code. Um, and then we have all the all the processes that are like code. Um, and we can even do a where object instead of where, and that would just be the proper way. Um, but let's say you don't really know the name of the attribute, and you don't really want to spend that time. What we can do instead of outputting it to where object, you can actually output that to out dash grid view. And you can even give it a title as well. So here, let's just give it a title of processes on my computer. So if we actually run this here, and we actually have the title here, processes on my computer, and we can actually see all the processes here. So we can actually add criteria here where we can actually select process name and we can add and process name contains, we can actually just put code and there it gives us our filter or even if we wanted to, just at this filter above here, we can actually type code in here and it'll give us the same result. So this just makes it very, very easy to see um, all your data. Uh, you can sort it by simply clicking on the uh, column title. Uh, so it's a lot easier, a lot more probably similar to how you would view data in Excel uh, on a non-Excel formatted data, really. Um, and then what we can even do is we have our CSV file, we have a JSON file, we have an XML file here. So let's actually just create a variable here for all the different file paths that we have. And uh, let's see what we can do um, with just importing the different data sets. So let's create a variable for JSON, XML, and CSV. And we are just going to link it to the file paths accordingly. So let me just copy all of these paths here. I won't be covering the exact details of the CSV, JSON, and XML. I do have those videos currently up right now on the intermediate tutorial series. Uh, so if you guys do want a deeper dive on CSV files, JSON files, and XML files, I would highly recommend to go check that out. Um, but let's actually just go ahead and let's start off with the simplest one here, which is gonna be the CSV file. So let's go ahead and let's actually just store our data in CSV data. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an import dash CSV. And then we're going to do the path is going to be our CSV file path. And our delimiter is going to be a comma. And then all we want to do here is take CSV data and pipe that out to out dash grid view. All right. And let's just run these three lines here. And our window pops up and notice because we didn't give it a title this time, the title of the window by default is just the line that actually gets outputted to out grid view, including the out grid view. So here we have dollar sign CSV data piped to out grid view. And there we have our data here. So if we wanted to find out 
let's say we all want our employees from Canada. We can type in Canada and there they are. If we want all of them from the States or United States, um, but either way, it uh, United it works. Um, and you can always, again, specify more like country and contains United. Um, so there are a lot of options that you can do. Again, you can sort them by alphabetical order. Now, if this was a large CSV file, this is where you can see that benefit compared to just looking at the data plainly in the console. It's a lot more, it's a lot more playable. Um, you can click through it. You can sort it easily. Uh, you can search through the data. I find a lot easier. Um, might be a lot easier for other people that aren't used to working with PowerShell to see the data. So this could even be something as we've seen before in another video is how to make EXEs. Uh, you can easily do that as well. Uh, you can actually also just make shortcuts that will call the PowerShell and then output it to out grid view. And then all you would have to do is add the weight um, parameter and that will keep the PowerShell window up. Um, so that could also be something pretty cool. Um, we will actually be seeing that at the end of this video, but let's keep going with the JSON file. So with our JSON file, just to kind of go over JSON files a little bit here, um, my JSON file format, there is a top level object called employees and all of our employees are stored in that. So we will have to do a dot notation. Um, so let's go ahead and let's create a variable type JSON data and let's do our get content here. And our path is going to be JSON file path. And we're just going to pipe that to convert from JSON. And then let's do JSON data dot employees. And let's pipe that out to out grid view. And let's actually give it a title here. And we're going to give that a title of JSON data view. All right. And let's run these couple lines here for the JSON data. And there we have it. We have our JSON data view title, and we have our ability to sort through the different titles, the different date of births, the last name, first names, employees. Uh, so we can easily search, let's say who was born in 1987. And we have our employees that come up here with the date of births. Of course, if they had the employee ID of 1987, they would all also appear unless you did a date of birth that contains 1987 here. And deed that out, then you would only have the date of births that contain 1987. So that is the JSON view. Now, of course, we can do the exact same thing with XML. Um, and XML, once again, uh, in here, we actually have an employees object, and then we have employee objects as well. So we have to do a little something extra here. Uh, so as we know, to import XML data, we actually have to add our square brackets, XML to add that data type. And let's do XML data. We're going to make that equal to get content from the path of XML file path. And then let's do XML data dot employees dot employee. And we are going to pipe that out to out grid view and let's run these few lines and there we have our XML data again with all of our information in there once again we could still sort the exact same way and view that data very very easily now of course um, what we did here uh, as an example I'm just going to use the CSV file as an example is we actually stored it into a variable but you actually don't even need to do that. You can actually do an import dash CSV path CSV file path delimiter. Let's put our delimiter here, comma, and we can output that directly to out grid view. And we don't even need to store it into a variable. We can output that data right away. So that is very, very handy. 
Uh, you can easily use that for exploring your data, different datas in PowerShell. If you don't want to look through the console, look through all that information as well. So let's actually see how we can actually also create a shortcut on the computer. Let's say to give to an employee or a coworker, a manager that might not necessarily be comfortable using PowerShell, um, but they can use the data very easily for them. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and let's do show more, show more options here. And let's do a new shortcut. And what we're going to do is the location of the item is we are going to go ahead and I believe we should just be able to do PowerShell. So PWSH um, for PowerShell 7, it's actually going to be PowerShell all typed out here. And let's do a dash command. And let's do a pair of double quotes here and it's going to be a get process we're going to pipe that to out grid view and then dash wait let's go next and there we have it so if we double click on it there it is it runs our powershell script that we have for get process and if we close the out grid view it automatically closes that powershell window um, so as an example here, let's go back into properties. Um, so as you can see, it's running PowerShell. It's getting the get process and we have outputted it to with a dash wait. If you do not put this dash wait here, this is what happens. It'll open and it'll close right away. So that's kind of where I mentioned a little bit earlier. If you're wanting to create a shortcut, always add that dash wait at the end and that'll actually get it really nicely. So what you could actually do with this possibility of just quickly getting data out and being very visible without grid view, they can easily sort it and get that information. If you created yourself uh, some REST PS using some other videos, um, or if they have Active Directory tools installed, you can easily set them up with shortcuts to get all the employees in the company or something um, and then they can easily filter it with that easy filter bar at the top or with selecting the different filters in out grid view out grid view is very very good for people that aren't really used to playing with powershell aren't really used to doing the pipe where or pipe sorts out grid view is very very useful I'm probably more useful in forms of shortcuts um, or automated scripts that you can just go ahead and give to people and they can run and look through the data more so than creating it for yourself. You wouldn't want this in an automated script because uh, again, it gives something to the user to actually interact with. Uh, but if you're handing it to people that again, aren't used to PowerShell or just want something quick and easy to use, Outgrid View is a great commandlet to use. Hopefully you guys find a use for it in your scenarios as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any other command lists that you guys want, want me to cover, please let me know down in the comment section down below. Please be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.